The Lord be with you. Welcome to our video for the third Sunday in Lent, which is March 20th, 2022. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Glenn Kleppe. Uh, today to lead us in worship, we'll be using uh, Divine Service Setting 2, uh, which is in the Lutheran Service book. We begin with a hymn. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Israel. 
And you, son of man, say to your people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him when he transgresses. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall by it when he turns from his wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by his righteousness when he sins. Though I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, yet if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in his injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if he turns from his sin and does what is just and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has taken in robbery, and walks in the statutes of life, not doing injustice, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right, he shall surely live. Let your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when it is your own way that is not just. When the righteous turn from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die from it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by this. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Our epistle lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning with the first verse. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According 
13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should he use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone, this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
they died anyway. Then he tells a parable about a fruit tree with no fruit. This is our text. In 1981, the rabbi Harold Kushner wrote a book titled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. The book is about the problem of suffering in the world. Rabbi Kushner's son died at a young age of a rare disease. He wrote the book to help grieving people. He thought that his son was a good person, didn't deserve to get the disease nor die from it. In the book, Kushner concludes that basically God does his best but is unable to protect from everything. When you're having trouble in your life, he will help you as much as he can, but that's the best he can do. That conclusion doesn't seem very comforting. How do we know what God can and can't do? And if God can't do some things, is he really God? If God isn't all-powerful, he's only different than us by a matter of degrees. He can do some things, he can't do others. The comforting thing is, the Bible tells us that's not true. God is all-powerful. His word is quite clear about that. But knowing that God is omnipotent doesn't help much. He can stop suffering, but often he doesn't. There's still suffering. People suffer Ill, uh, sickness and pain and loss, and very often God lets them. Our knowledge of God's power doesn't always bring us comfort. Sometimes it brings us frustration. I know that God can do anything, but sometimes he doesn't do what I want him to. What about when bad things happen to good people? Jesus addresses the situation in our gospel lesson this morning. In the gospel, Jesus is talking to a group of people who are thinking about two situations which Jesus seems to be familiar with. The first is the slaughter of some Galileans by corrupt government while they were making sacrifices to God. Certainly that was a tragedy. The second was a disaster when a tower in the Siloam area of Jerusalem fell and killed 18 people. That was also a circumstance that would cause tremendous grief and sadness. The people brought these situations to Jesus. They wanted to make sure he knew about these disasters. But mostly, they wanted answers. How could God let this happen? Were these people who died worse than other people? Did they deserve what they got? Jesus hears their concerns, and he offers an answer. But then again, he doesn't. Jesus answers, but he doesn't give the answer they expect, or maybe that they want. Jesus said that it wasn't because they were terrible people. That's what we would expect. I think that's even what we would want. The answer he gives instead is the truth, but not what we want to hear. Jesus said that these terrible things happened because of sin. He said that these people who died were no worse than you and me. They sinned. The wages of sin is death. We have sinned, and that's what we deserve as well. It's because of sin. Rabbi Harold Kushner didn't want to think that his son suffered because of sin. He was a good person. Why would something bad happen to him? Jesus would say, yes, he did sin. And the result of sin is suffering, is death. Jesus would say that about any of us. We all suffer because of sin. But it's a little more complicated than that. I would say that suffering for sin comes to us in three different ways. First of all, we suffer because of other people's sins. You know that to be true. If someone steals from you, they sin, but you suffer. If someone gets drunk and drives and hurts you or someone you love, they sin, but you suffer. If someone... It, 
We regularly suffer because of the sins of others. Often we are hurt by the sins of people we love, and also they love us. Often they do not intend that we suffer, but sin causes suffering. And sometimes our difficulties are caused by the sins of someone else. But of course, sometimes we suffer because of our own specific sins. If you tell your, if you tell rumors and you like to talk behind people's backs, and then you find yourself isolated and without friends, you're suffering because of your own sin. If you practice poor stewardship and find yourself in financial difficulty, you suffer because of your own sin. Sometimes we think God is punishing us, but in fact, we are simply facing the consequences of our actions. Sin causes suffering. And finally, much of the suffering in the world isn't because of any specific sin, but simply because there's sin in the world. When Adam sinned, God cursed the earth. Everyone and everything fell into sin, fell away from God. So the world is not very good, like God created it. Hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and other natural disasters interrupt our lives, and they cause tremendous amounts of pain, which isn't the result of any particular sins. Accidents happen, and kids die from rare diseases without regard to who's better than whom. The sinfulness of this world causes suffering, irrespective of who a person is. Once again, I've reached a point in this sermon that isn't very comforting. Bad things can happen to you, even if you do good. It happens because of sin, and often God doesn't stop it. There's no comfort in the consequences of sin. All have sinned. The comfort comes from the fact that Jesus died on the cross to face the punishment for sin. And by so doing, he won forgiveness for us. The comfort is that we have eternal life because we're forgiven. The comfort comes from the fact that God is ever patient with us, even in our sin. Jesus went on to tell a parable about a fruitless tree. The owner told the gardener to cut it down. It was wasting soil. But the gardener, who represents Jesus, begs to give the tree another year, another chance. The point of the parable is that God always gives another chance. Take comfort in the fact that no matter what has happened, God will forgive you again. And will continue forgiving you as long as you need his forgiveness. Why do bad things happen to good people? They don't. Bad things happen to sinners. But because of God's patience and Jesus' sacrifice, very good things happen to bad people all the time. Forgiveness happens, and eternal life happens. You're a sinner. God has proclaimed you a saint and given you all that that entails. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For repentance and faith in Christ, that God would guard us from doubt and deliver us, lest we perish, to life and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a faithful proclamation of truth, that God would embolden pastors to warn of sin and death, and give all Christians strength to defend that message, that sinners would be turned to life through the proclamation of Christ and his salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For protection against immorality, that God would make our homes havens of chastity and godly instruction, filling marriages with fidelity and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in authority, that God, who establishes justice by his law, which is for all, would enlighten them to rule justly for true good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who cry to the Lord for mercy in a world where towers fall and sinners work evil, we name them now. That the Lord would deliver and heal them and strengthen their faith to look for him, to him for help, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all good works that we brought into God's vineyard and appointed to bear fruit, would show forth his love and grace in all that we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you led your people Israel through the sea and fed them in the wilderness until you delivered them to the promised land. You have also faithfully enlivened your people with Christ by means of word and sacrament. Receive our thanks for your kindness to all the saints who now rest from their labors and sustain us by your means of grace until you deliver us also to heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Glenn Kleppe, pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. Zion's located at 410 Main Street South, Pine City. Our zip code is 55063. We have a website at zionpinecity.org, and we take email at zionpinecity at gmail.com. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, which is called Glenn Kleppe, where lots of services can be found. We have worship at 9 o'clock Sunday mornings here in our sanctuary. Also, uh, during the season of Lent, now we have Wednesday services at 11 o'clock in the morning and 7 in the evening every Wednesday. Also, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, which are coming up in the not-too-distant future, we have services at 11 in the morning and 7 in the evening.